You know what I think about content creation or producing stuff on Linux in general? It's hard, people. But not for the reasons that you might think. Content creators and product designers typically need one or more out of five things in order to create awesome things. A text editor of some sorts for scripting, a recording tool, a video editing program, an image manipulation or drawing program, or of course, sometimes even 3D software. While on Windows and macOS you have a wide variety of different tools, programs and awesome plugins, on Linux the situation is different. Sometimes. Okay, not that often, but yes. And no, let me explain, right after you hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you and let's go. Content creation or, well, designing any product for a company or just yourself is not really something that a lot of people spend a lot of time thinking about. Just install the programs, maybe even pay for a subscription, wink, or use some free tools. No questions asked. While most designers swear on Adobe or Apple products, they have a problem when they want to start using Linux. Since a lot of products, if not all of them, are just not available. Now a lot of hardcore Linux chats would just say, Digitees companies have moved to something that is free and open source. And while yes, there are alternatives which are up to par with proprietary stuff, it isn't always that simple. Especially in a commercial sense, be it because you receive a license from a company you work for or you're selling products yourself. The importance of good support is becoming more and more a factor if your time frame to fix things gets smaller and smaller. I like to refer to that as pointing your finger at someone else and saying, you said it should work. Why doesn't it work? Can't really do that with open source, let's be real. So where do we stand as creators? Well, a lot of programs simply don't work on Linux and they probably won't in the near foreseeable future. But here's the thing. If you start from scratch or value your money as a business owner, because correct licenses might not be a good idea if you plan to make money off it, <coughs> then you might just build a big enough knowledge base that you really don't need commercial support. But that's more of an issue for bigger companies which would need to teach new programs themselves. That being said, even if there are solutions out there that work really well or even better sometimes, the road of actually installing them can be a hassle. For example, let's start off with a video editing program, DaVinci Resolve. This is a really awesome and powerful tool, which allows you to not just cut videos, you can add pre-made text animations, video transitions, make after effects like, well, effects, tune your audio and apply one, if not the best color correction in the whole industry. And the best part of it is that it is available for Windows, macOS and also Linux. But it's not that simple. If you want to install DaVinci Resolve on Linux, then apparently you just need to download it, run it and you're good to go. Alright, first issue. Not all distributions come with all of the dependencies and packages needed to actually run it. Fedora is missing a dependency for example. Also if you have an Nvidia GPU and use it with their proprietary driver, then you will have a much better experience than on AMD, even though it runs fine on it on other platforms. AMD cards on Linux have several issues with Resolve. For once you need to install OpenCL, which is not always pre-installed on some distros. Also, depending on your Mesa driver version, it might also not work, because a lot of open source OpenCL packages are just able to open DaVinci Resolve, but you can't play any videos or it just straight up crashes. In that case you need another OpenCL package, which might work, but can also fail. You can try to build a proprietary OpenCL part of the AMD Pro driver yourself and use that instead of other OpenCL versions. This works fine by the way. Or you just go ahead and install the AMD Pro driver. That is, if you're on Ubuntu, Red Hat or CentOS. Because if your distro does not offer this driver in the repos, it can suck to install it. It's actually so bad that I went with actually building just the OpenCL part of the driver. And now, stop. You see how many steps that took to just install DaVinci Resolve on Linux? Yeah sure, some might say, just don't use it, or well, I didn't use an Nvidia GPU. But that's not the point. The point is that there is a Linux version, it supports Nvidia, AMD and Intel, drivers do exist, but the process to get it running can be horrible sometimes. Now I'm not going to be that guy who's going to point my finger at someone and say, oh it's the fault of these developers. Why does Fedora not have libglu pre-installed? Why is OpenCL not installed? Why is it so hard to get it running even with a version that is supposed to work? Questions like that can make it a real nightmare for content creators because it is valuable time that should be spent on their content or free time. Breaks are important people. However, open source solutions which are easy to use do exist. GIMP, 
a Photoshop alternative, KD in Live, another video editor, and Inkscape, a drawing program, do work just fine. Their installation process is also very easy. Go into a software store, search for it, and install. Done. No wizard, no waiting time, just done. Why not just use those? Well, some programs are actually good. GIMP, for example, can produce a lot of things exactly the way that Photoshop could. However, this is often only possible with extensions. The lack of templates can be off-putting to some, but that's a different issue I've already covered. You know, starting from the beginning and not transitioning. Issues are often the lack of certain features. For example, Adobe has developed a system where each program of theirs can somewhat cross-save the editing process, which works. Sometimes at least. But it's not just this functionality, it is also about the capabilities of each program as well. KD in Live is good for editing, but if you need fancy animations, then you need a program that can do something like this. Now, you can't just get your half edited timeline out of KD in Live and just import it into another program unless you export it as a video or you change your workflow. That is why programs like DaVinci Resolve, After Effects, Premiere, and Photoshop are so appealing. They have a good feature set which is already mostly covered by open source alternatives, but the thing that counts is how you can combine them. It's faster and also easier. That's basically it. Now, I'm not saying that open source developers should focus on that. Not at all, actually. What I'm saying is that proprietary companies should focus more on Linux. Finding system requirements, for example, for which version of Linux DaVinci Resolve is actually built, is hard to find and often just hidden away somewhere. And even programs that do perform as intended on Linux, depending on who released this version or how you download it, it can be different. OBS, for example, works great on Linux. However, most repository versions of each distro don't come with the browser source. It's definitely not essential for streamers or anything like that. But wait, they do offer a Flatpak version. Well, since version 28, it crashes your desktop environment as soon as you want to change some settings. This already happened on NVIDIA and now on OMD after a complete reinstall as well, so... A lot of problems or lack of certain features is not a Linux or developers issue, however. The programs that are out there do work as intended and are actually really good. Not gonna lie. I actually prefer many of them over proprietary solutions, because not only are they free, they just work. From what I can tell from the online communities, but also from personal experiences, Adobe products, for example, tend to crash a lot. I don't think that GIMP ever crashed on me, unless I did something really, really stupid. Being free, more stable, having a similar or even better feature set are all good reasons to use them. And yet I can't produce my content as efficiently without DaVinci Resolve. So don't be mad at people asking for proprietary software. Don't just tell them that they should use the alternatives, maybe just ask them first what they actually need. A lot of people out there just use a program because they've heard of it. Why use Photoshop for thumbnails when you can literally achieve the same results in GIMP? Well, sadly, because they just don't know anything else. Be it because of a lack of tutorials, the sheer denial of learning a different GUI, or just the never heard of it moment. It is our job to show them how they can use open source programs, but also how they can work around issues with proprietary software. In short, content creation is a massive industry nowadays, but it's held back on Linux. Not necessarily because of missing programs or integrations, but more by the work that needs to be done in order to work around issues or simply the installation process. Now again, I'm not here to point fingers. It's the fault of those developers. It's the fault of the community. And so on. I'm just here to raise awareness so that everyone who watches this video has it in the back of their mind for the future. And that's where I'll leave it. So if you've liked this video, then definitely make sure to like and subscribe. You already made it this far, so it probably was interesting, right? Ooh, make also sure to check out this video right here. It is recommended for you. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.